<laughs> it's uh, broken glasses. <laughs> I hate it. I keep breaking my reading glasses. Okay, maybe they're partially seeing too. It's 90 degrees on my porch. And 6 o'clock at night. It was 102 today. So, <laughs> wisdom being the better part of virtue, or valor, something, I moved inside to record. <laughs> and my back has been thrown out, so it's not such a good idea to go stand up, run across, start the recording, and back and forth, back and forth. So, for now, it's been nice in the air conditioning, which, praise the Lord, that currently we can afford now. Next month we may be out on the street. God forbid, but you never know. The Lord leads as the Lord the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And as he leads us, he provides for us. And as he abides with us, then God guides us. And so whether he guides us for provision or whether he guides us in taking us to a place where he can better use us, then it's the Lord. And that's why we call him Lord and not just Savior. For me, Jesus is Lord. It doesn't mean for everyone. But for me, oh yeah. When you're disappointed and we're reading Speak God and we're sharing that because God is speaking to us. When you're disappointed, discouraged, defeated. Are you aware of Satan's deadly devices? Sure sounds like a lot of D's all of a sudden. Did, 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 did. Has disappointment in a person or situation ever caused you to go into an emotional tailspin? Have you ever felt you might drown in your own discouragement? Have you ever fallen into a well of dejection and despaired to the point where you were so demoralized that you simply sat down and didn't attempt to climb out? Bummer, dude. <laughs> then, my friend, you have engaged in warfare with the evil one who desires to take you captive and you have allowed him to penetrate your line of defense with his armored divisions and his foot soldiers. He got you. You have done battle with Satan's five deadly D's and tasted their awful wretchedness. The first deadly D, I knew there was gonna be D's in this. Oh boy. The first deadly D is disappointment. To counterattack disappointment, you need to launch the Christian Strategic Defense System, SDS. You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> of faith that in meekness praises God in every situation by seeing it as God's sovereign appointment. In other words, recognize that God is allowing this to happen. Change the D of disappointment to an H and you have his appointment, not disappointment his appointment and you separate the word you get it you know h d me okay if you refuse to do this if you refuse to give thanks in everything believing that this is the will of god in christ jesus concerning you then the next deadly deed the enemy will launch against you is discouragement to become discouraged is to become disheartened to be weakened to lose your courage so that you think there is no way you can win when this happens you throw up your hands and say i'll never make it or I'll never survive. It's no use. I'll never get out of this one. It's a mess. I just, there's no way out. Unless you deal with discouragement, headed off at the pass, there is no way to be the victor. After Moses died, God was careful to admonish his successor, Joshua, to be strong and courageous as he led the children of Israel into the long-awaited promised land. God repeats himself three times as he says to Joshua, be strong and courageous. Joshua 1, 6 through 9. Courage, rather than discouragement, would bring the children of Israel into the promises of God. Years earlier, the children of Israel had lost a battle with discouragement at Kadesh Barnea. Instead of being strong and facing their enemies in faith, the Israelites had believed the report of the ten spies who had become discouraged by the sight of giants in the land. As a result, they had spent 40 years wandering in the wilderness. What about you? Have you listened to the world's analysis of your condition or your future rather than being strong and courageous and believing your God? If so, then you have found yourself mired in the mud of dejection. In the mud of dejection. 
Instead of the joy of the Lord being your strength, as Nehemiah exhorts his people in Nehemiah 8.10, you are about to faint, like Isaiah 61.3. When dejection pulls you down into its depths, you face lowness of spirit and emotional fatigue. The oil of gladness has been exchanged for mourning, and you have not covered yourself with a spirit of praise. Either you praise God in pure gut-level faith, whether you feel it or not, or you will continue to weaken. Then you will find yourself in despair. Having lost or abandoned hope, despair leaves you apathetic. Your mind is numb. And, if this goes unchecked, you may find yourself acting recklessly, not considering the consequences of your actions. Desperation is energized despair. And in this case, state, you do things which you later regret, but, many, but which many times brings lifelong consequences. You reap what you sow. Often you see examples of this when people suddenly find themselves confronted by the infidelity of their mate, or the demand for a divorce, or when they are faced with financial reversal. During the Great Depression in America, many despairing businessmen opened the windows of their offices and jumped to their deaths. Others put a gun into their head and pulled the trigger. They reacted in the flesh and the rationale of their own minds and the consequences were deadly. But when you find yourself in a state of despair, you need to say with the psalmist, Why are you in despair, O my soul, and why have you become disturbed within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him for the help of his presence. Why art thou disquieted, O my soul? And why art thou at unrest within? Fear not, for I shall yet praise him. The way I remember it. <laughs> when you are in despair, write down why, and then look for a specific promise of God to write next to each cause of your despair. If you don't, you'll find yourself demoralized. And demoralized people run in circles. They cannot get their act together in their home or in their business affairs or in any of the disciplines of life. Many times they are simply paralyzed with fear. But God has not given you the spirit of fear, but a power and of love and of a sound mind. 2 Timothy 1.7 He is the power, the glory, and the victory. So when the five deadly sins are launched against you, you can be more than a conqueror of this enemy of your soul. Whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. So really, the bottom line is, as much as you, know, you can put all the D's there, and begin to stutter, it just simply identifies a process that we all go through, that we all feel, that we all sometimes have encounters with. And at times, the enemy is plaguing you. At times, God is instructing you. At times, your flesh <laughs> is beating you up. But most of the time, if you have faith, if you rejoice, if you give thanks, if you go, hey, who cares? Guess what? If you just wait long enough, God comes through. And I don't mean wait long enough like as though you have to wait, you know, overnight or three days or six days or a year. No, you can either handle it like she said immediately and take, you know, the promise of God and write it down in the Word of God, you know, and look at it and then, you know, see the problems that you had and kind of like, you know, coordinate it and then put them together and go, hey, you know, this doesn't look so bad, you know, I can see because this is God and this is it and this is this and this is this and he's bigger and there's that and we got it covered. Or just go, you know, I don't know. But God, I do know you. And you know me. And if you don't fix it, I'm going to mess it up big time. So if you take that easy way out, then like me, you just trust in the Lord with all your heart. You don't lean in your own understanding. Maybe in all your ways, he will acknowledge. If you acknowledge him, he will direct your path. And he might avoid some of the pitfalls. Maybe. What do you think? I think so. <laughs>